Welcome back. Today we're gonna to take a look at a new release from Spinnaker, which is what I think is one of the more interesting Spinnakers currently available. And it's actually not new, but more of a re-release of the Dumas from last year. And it's been re-released with a few new dial colors and a very interesting mesh bracelet. It was actually a watch I had my eye on last year. So when Spinnaker contacted me and asked if I'd like to look at it, I of course said yes, as it just has this very interesting styling with a retro 70s dial combined with this octagonal shaped case. It just gives it a very different look than most of the other watches out there. And it's a watch that I've had some very strong positive as well as negative feelings about. And most of those were actually in the first few minutes of opening the box. So I think this one should be an interesting one to talk about. The first thing you notice is that the case shape is a bit unusual. Although it is a bit symmetrical having an octagonal shape which is further emphasized by a polished beveled edge that just runs along the top of both sides, as this polished edge contrasts nicely with just the brush case finish that dominates the rest of it. And that does continue to the rear of the case, where you can see an exhibition case back. And one good thing here is that Spinnaker decided to actually let you see the movement, rather than block it like on the hull. And here you can also see these hidden lugs, so overall, this is definitely a watch that just has this really large presence. So it's not really surprising that the case width here is 43 millimeters, and that's without the crown. Width is closer to 48 and a half. And it does have a lug to lug of 48. So as I said, it is a bit symmetrical. Although with that 48 millimeter lug to lug, I do think it should wear a little bit smaller than your typical 43 millimeter, but we'll talk about that in a bit. My bigger concern here is really the thickness at 15 millimeters, so it's definitely a bit tall, and visually it also looks a bit chunky as well. So it really shouldn't be any surprise that it's also a hefty thing at 200 grams with its bracelet. And I want to talk about the bracelet right away, because as soon as I got the watch out of the box, I sized it and tried it on, and then immediately took this thing off, because I honestly don't know what the hell they were thinking. I'm not sure if it's completely unredeemable, but it's pretty damn close. Chainmail is honestly a better description than mesh on this thing, as it's practically weaponized. Which is actually kind of a positive that it's really that well built, as it has this just solid chain that's 4mm thick. And the clasp is equally as well made, and actually nicely milled. So in some ways this bracelet was a good idea, and some good money was spent on it, it just really wasn't well thought out. The first issue is the weight, as it just adds 100 extra grams to an already solid watch. And the second, of course, is the thickness. 4mm chain sounds like a good idea until you get to the part where it doubles up, and then you have 8mm of chain plus a keeper. And the keeper itself is really the bigger issue. It's just really difficult to use to get both sides of the chain in it. But worse, the edges of those keepers are sharp, and again, you have that sharp edge just being constantly pushed up against your wrist. So I only could stand a few minutes with this thing on it before having to take it off, at which point I put on just a nice simple silicone strap, which is actually what the first release of the Dumas had. And honestly, they just should have stayed with it. I mean, if you're going for a 70s style watch, especially one with a yellow dial, then it's really made for a rubber or silicon strap. Generally, Spinnaker is known for making a lot of dive style watches. So it was actually a bit surprising to see the Duma here with 300 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. And no disrespect to Spinnaker, but it's kind of a nice surprise to see them actually make a real dive watch. And maybe because of that, they're also pricing this a bit high with an MSRP of $400. Although, do remember that is before the typical Spinnaker discount, but again, we'll talk about that at the end because it is pretty important. Now, another nice change of pace is the signed crown, where it's not just etched into the metal, but more of a plastic insert here. It's kind of a cool touch, but honestly, I'm not really sure it meshes with the rest of the case design, which is a bit more tool-like. And looking at the crown, I do think it looks just a little bit small for the case size, 
but it does blend in nicely visually with those stubby crown guards. The finishing of the case here is pretty good. It's just kind of utilitarian looking, which is kind of a contrast to that funky yellow of the dial. But overall, I think it works. And the only issue I really found was that the bottom of the octagonal edge is just a bit sharp. The bezel here is also a little different. In fact, maybe a little different is just the whole theme of the watch. The bezel is more of a minimalistic design. It's black with indicators, but no Arabics on it. And the insert is covered by mineral glass, which I think just gives it a bit of a glossy look, which kind of matches the polished edges of the bezel and contrasts with the brushed edge of the case, which winds up just kind of highlighting the dial below it. The bezel itself isn't very tall, and it doesn't really stick out beyond the case, so it's actually kind of hard to get a good grip on it when you want to turn it. Yet when you do get a good grip, the action is pretty good. It just has a good feel to it, as well as a nice sound, and no real backplay to speak of. Now, while the crystal on the bezel is mineral, the watch itself is a flat sapphire. And one thing that just really struck me from the moment I opened the box here was just how crystal clear and vibrant the watch dial is below it. And I think that's because of the flat crystal, as well as just the flat yellow color of the dial below it. There really isn't anything here to cause much of a reflection or any glare. I mean, heck, there isn't even any real metallic borders on the indicators, so it's just a really, really non-reflective dial. So most of my shots and angles I was taking pictures at, I mean, everything just looked crystal clear. And that vibrant color of the dial and the minute hand just really stood out. And this does translate into the real world. And I think this also helped this make just some of the cooler time lapses I've ever done. As for the dial design itself, well, it's a bit crowded. But it does have this cool multi-layered design as you head out towards the chapter ring. Now construction-wise, I think the dial is made up of two parts here. The first is the main dial, and it's just this flat surface that has the 24-hour indicators, the logo, and the text. Then you have the chapter ring sitting on top of that, and I think the hour indicators are attached to that chapter ring, and they just kind of rise out above it. Which is kind of a cool touch here, but I think the indicators themselves are just a bit too small for the size of the dial. They just seem minuscule and dwarfed by the overall size of things. The framing for the date is also a bit interesting here. And while they did frame it with the gray, like the indicators, it's about twice the thickness. And instead of blending in, I think it just kind of stands out more and is kind of a little distracting. The handset is also an interesting choice. And I believe it's what's referred to as a plongeur, which I believe is often most associated with the Omega Plowprof and I hope I pronounced those right. But basically, it's just this short pencil hour hand with this very, very oversized and colorful minute hand. And in this case, it's also joined by a lollipop second hand. It definitely is a bit different, and I can see how some won't like it. But in terms of context, I think these were originally made for divers specifically. And on a diver, if you're actually using it as a diver, then your focus really should be on the minute hand when you're underwater, and where that happens to be associated with the bezel. And after wearing this for a bit, I can say it definitely works, as that large and colorful sword just really draws your eyes towards it. Which I think is great for functionality, as I said if you're actually diving, but it's not quite as useful for everyday life, and might wind up being just a little bit distracting. Now, as for the design as a whole, well, it's just this interesting combination of different geometries, as well as a really different take on how the watch plays with the light. Yet here, you have this really flat but vibrantly colored dial, which is then surrounded by this glossy, very eye-catching bezel. And I think really, in a lot of ways, this is a watch that might look a little odd when you really focus in on the individual aspects of it. But when you start to take your focus out further and look at the design as a whole, I think it does work together wisely. So let's go to the loom. And the loom here actually looked pretty good, at least at first glance. And I really like the loom on the bezel, it's always a good touch. And I initially had real high hopes for it, so I put it up in a comparison against both the Seiko Turtle and the Phoebus Bronze Eagle Ray. But with the Duma, well, after about 40 minutes, you can see that it just really doesn't have the oomph to last. Which, when you look at the size of the hour hand and the indicators, it's kind of understandable. They are a bit small. But that giant minute hand, 
I mean, that really should have performed better here. So I'd say the loom is okay, but not really good. And it's definitely something that should be better for the price. Now, moving on to the movement, we do have the standard Seiko NH35A. And price-wise, I do think this is kind of on the upper end where you should actually see it. But regardless, it is a great standard workhorse movement. And I was personally getting about negative 12 seconds a day. So okay, but not necessarily that great. Now, one good thing about those hidden lugs is that it makes any two-piece look like it just perfectly belongs with the case. And on a good two-piece, the Duma is actually surprisingly comfortable. But the other side of that coin for those hidden lugs is that it just makes putting on any type of NATO or a single piece just really, really difficult. The only way I was able to do it was to install the string bars over the strap itself. So you can use them, it's just difficult to put on and kind of eliminates the ability to quickly change them. So to wrap things up, and this is actually kind of a hard one. Usually I try to pre-write this end segment and I've rewritten it multiple times and this is actually the second time filming it because I wasn't really happy with it the first time. So you might notice a change of clothes. In many ways, I like the overall idea of the Duma and the design and the watch itself, I think are pretty solid. But there are also some things I don't like, and maybe that's really part of the problem, is it's a watch I really want to like, but after spending some time with it, I think it's just rather okay. It was a watch that I was really excited when I heard I was going to get it, and I thought it was really cool from the first time I opened the box, but that impression just really changed over a very short period of time, and maybe that's the most telling thing here. So in the end, I don't think the Duma is really a watch for me. But I can definitely see how some would love it, and especially if you're looking for something that's really different with just a big presence. But in some ways, none of that really matters, as I think there are two really big reasons here that this is just going to be a pass for most people. And the first, of course, is the bracelet, as it's really kind of hard to recommend something that doesn't have a functioning bracelet. And I know most of us are watch geeks and we wind up changing it out anyways, but it still feels kind of irresponsible to recommend something that you basically have to fix before you can even use it. And the second thing is going to be price. Now, even with the typical discount code from Spinnaker, where I think mine's 15%, that's still $340 for this watch. And if you add another bracelet or a strap, that's at least 20 bucks. So you're looking at at least 360 here. And that's kind of a lot to ask for what you're getting here. As at that price, there are just a lot of great watches out there with similar specs for the same price or even cheaper. And personally, I'd have a hard time picking this over, say, a Zealous Swordfish if you still want something bold, or even an Orient Kamasu if you want something more classic looking. If for no other reason, then they're just more comfortable and they have better loom. So I think Spinnaker just really needs to rethink this. And at the very least, bring back the silicon strap and maybe look at ways of reducing the cost. And if they're able to do that, then I think the Duma could be a nice addition to their lineup. But until then, I really think they're just fighting an uphill battle they can't win. But what do you think about the Spinnaker Duma? Let me know down below in a comment. Is it a fine addition or is it really something they need to go back to the drawing board with? And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.